Sandra, what are you doing? I'm skirting. You're skirting a the fleece. A clador fleece. A clador yes. fleece. Yes. And this is at the beginning of the day yeah. here this... at the Connemara National Park. And what is it that we've been looking for? We've been looking for veg matter, um, dirt, uh, poo, uh, everything bad that we don't want in the fleece. Matted pieces. Uh, yeah, just all this. Uh, second cuts. We look for all that. All that kind of stuff that we can't spin because we're going to be spinning this from raw, which is not what we normally do. Normally, we wash it and then turn it into and card it and then turn it into roving. So this is exactly. skipping a whole series of processes, which makes it not as easy, but more straightforward. Yes. And your hands feel really nice afterwards. And are these, <laughs> these are all products that these you've made from um, clatter sheep. So these are felted, felted wet and felted. wet felted, needle felted, needle felted. Crochet. Crochet, teddy bear, and, just and a variety of yarns. They're fantastic, and it is so soft. And I love that you've made some beautiful clatter sheep. Those are wonderful. What is this here? That is roving that we will be spinning some of this. Too. Ah, as well. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to be spinning all raw, because... No. It, we have to show variety that we can do a clean fleece and clean roving spinning. Like uh, a one-year-old sheep on this, it, it, it would uh, feed out a lot easier. Okay. And then, uh, They're not inside the sheep. Of course, you're going to go and spread more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, took her, I think she started off, my wife said, to do a, a, a kind of blouse. But when she left her, she decided she did the whole thing. Did the whole thing. Did you picture? Huh? Did you picture? I happen to picture on me now. Oh. But, uh, that must be amazing. Probably you just walk along the way. That's that right. You happy with that? Yeah, that looks good. Go to him or? Um, well, no, I, I you can just. You want me to sit down, down or? Uh, I can, yeah, I can it's just, probably. I'll just, just turn this around. Just we'll get to talk. Just the exact same as you were chatting to me there. Just introduce All I'm doing yourself, here now is just uh, taking this off. Yeah. So the girls can go and do it. Whenever you're it. starting again. Yeah, the girls are going to start knitting, and so you're just bowling up, and this is a combination of um, 
platter and Zwart Plus yeah. raw fleece spun. That's it. I did the Zwart Plus spinning and you did the clatter. So it's a combination of the two. Yeah. And it's got a beautiful um, color to it. The combination just looks gorgeous. I don't know if there's enough in it. There may, oh, there's not enough in it for a... Not enough in it for a hat. No, no, no. It's part of the hat. Because the right. other ladies have... Um, see, don't forget, we've had got uh, five people spinning today. So yeah, yeah. it's not just the little bit. But this is fantastic uh, for part of the hat. Anyway, thanks. No problem. No problem. Susan, you're yeah. casting on. And what is this you're casting on from? Um, this is the combination of uh, Euros Bark Blas and the Clador Sheep Wool 2 Ply. So they're... They've each been spun separately and then they're plied together. And it's completely a raw it's fleece. Raw. Yeah, you can raw. feel all the lanolin in it. You can smells. feel the oh, lanolin. Yeah, you can absolutely. smell it. it smells smells so good. Yes. Excellent. You going as fast so, as I can go. That's okay. <laughs> so you're two plying. And what does two plying mean? He's taking two bobbins of single spun uh, fleece and then twisting them together. And it makes it stronger and thicker. All the rest of it. So yeah, these on what are. You want to use it so it's this bobbin you're mm -hmm. spinning from, and this, and this one here, yeah. and putting it up here. Okay. And this is in preparation for Susan to knit. Susan to knit up. Very good. <laughs> and you're still spinning raw. Excellent stuff. Everybody's spinning raw claddle. So you're looking at the wheel? I am, yeah. Have you ever spun with one of these? No, no. Is he going to educate you in how to spin? I'm sure sure I would look around. Not in front of the camera. Oh, no, yo, so I have to stop videoing while you're no, doing it. No, 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 no. I'll do it. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. I had Pippa Hackett working on this last week. <laughs> at a festival up in the Midlands. Oh, okay. And she did very well at it. You can come up and you yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sean is an ex childhood advisor, and along with his friend, the late Tom King, him and Tom are responsible for the preservation of the cladder sheep. Sean is now going to show us the cladder sheep and the points of the breed and talk a bit about the breed itself. Sean, will we get? <laughs> we uh, don't have uh, October cladders. Uh, they have uh, they were, had dried out before uh, Tom King came on the scene. Uh, the breed was basically extinct. And uh, in, Tom got sick then in 2019, and he convinced William Tom here that he had a valuable sheep to sell. And uh, William took a chance and he bought 28 sheep off Tom. Uh, and uh, they were bred that year, and the following year they bought a few more. And in the uh, in that year, the DNA tested 65, and 56 of them had DNA that they hadn't seen before, uh, and a narrow face. They had light bone as well, uh, I'd say lighter than the, 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 the leg there, and they had a fine wool. They, um, I, I think the reason they survived 
was because of their fine wine. Uh, the the uh, Congestion Districts Board in 1892 did a, a report on Carna District and they said that all of the clothes worn by the people were of home manufacture. Now, uh, ordinary wool, if you uh, uh, put it close to your skin, it's very prickly. So obviously in, uh, in Carna where they were making all of their clothes, they were working with, uh, with fine wool. And we're finding that fine wool still in the Tladore. But I think as we read them back towards uh, Purse, the, the, uh, the quality of the wool will improve. Uh, that's uh, nearly all we want to say about that now. But um, William Cormican um, bought uh, these sheep off Tom King back in 2019, and in uh, 2020, 65 were tested for DNA, and uh, we weren't very optimistic that uh, uh, the test would be positive. And uh, we got a big surprise when six, 56 of the uh, 65 uh, had unique DNA. Uh, that was towards the end of November, and we had held back uh, the breeding, but uh, we didn't manage to get breeding groups arranged in, 20, in, 19, in 2020. But uh, we had um, breeding groups then of 8 to 10 years and a ram selected by uh, Arne O'Brien, our Nolan McHugh and Chavez. And uh, that's how they have been bred for the last couple of years. And uh, uh, Nolan McHugh looked at the DNA last year and uh, she said that all but eight of about 120 had uh, more than 50% clad or DNA. And quite a lot of them were over 100%. Over 100%. But uh, the story is, is really positive, but uh, there's a lot of fully white. But uh, in the few old pictures we have, uh, there are nearly always a black sheep in it. And there was obviously a, a black sheep, a black strain in the Tlador. Uh, uh, and uh, we don't want to bring too much black into them, but we would like to uh, holds that uh, that black in the uh, in, in the breeding. Uh, uh, this year now we have found two other uh, flocks uh, in the Connemara area that uh, we think have are clad or like, and we hope one of those has been tested uh, this week, and uh, which we know the results towards the end of July, and uh, the other. Uh, Group will be tested. Uh, uh, well, we get tag numbers at Cheaton time, and uh, they'll be tested uh, shortly after that. And uh, we'd be hoping to have a hundred uh, euros going to the ram this year. Uh, we had sixty last year. Now we're looking for uh, uh, breeders to uh, to keep them. Uh, so far, the national park own all of the sheep, and they give out the uh, breeding groups. To local farmers uh, around November day, and uh, the farmer keeps them, and uh, he sends back the the his his yews and the lambs around the first of August, and uh, for that uh, service they are paid uh, five hundred euros, uh, about a ten euro. Uh, now they're not going to make a whole pile of money at that, but they're uh, they're preserving the cladder. We're hoping. That uh, we haven't yet got uh, uh, recognition from the Cladol as a breed. Uh, the Department of Agriculture is to do that. We're hoping that uh, uh, we'll find out from the Department of Agriculture very shortly what uh, exactly do they want. And uh, what I'd be saying to them is what, what we can offer them is we can offer them a sheep uh, like this one. But, uh, um, white face, no hardens, uh, soft wool and uh, not very heavy and uh, the, the other sheep then 
with blacker faces and that have, uh, have the appearance of a lot of the appearance of blackface. And uh, I think uh, these sheep could go into a, a full flock group. But the, um, the ones without the good appearance could go into a supplementary flock group because we can't afford not to breed from all the oats we have. Uh, and uh, I, I think working with that, we could work up to uh, uh, a pretty purebred uh, flock of clad oats in, in uh, four or five years. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the uh, craft workers are very pleased uh, with the feather wool. That uh, it could be the finest wool of any breed in Ireland. Martin or Flaherty from the Arden Islands reckons that uh, it's quite close to the uh, to, to Shetland wool, and some Shetland wool is very fine. And uh, we think the the uh, uh, wool could be as fine as Cheviot, and if it is. It's the finest uh, wool in Ireland. Uh, it would be another product for the craft workers to work with. Uh, it, that uh, craft workers are always looking for something, uh, something new, and uh, this would be uh, this would be new. Well, you're doing very well on your short straw. Don't say anything rude. I'm still filming. <laughs> I never said anything rude in my life. Of course not. Now, to those who don't know, what is this for? Um, this is actually just a bobbin winder. So you take the... You take the and what's the bobbin, for those who don't know? That is the bobbin. This is the bobbin, which you're spinning onto. Yeah, exactly. And then it goes down here, and you get two of those when you fill them to ply, the, ply it together into two ply yarn. 
and two plies. So this is a single ply. Single ply, and once you have two together, it looks like this is the two ply. And that's a two ply. Yeah. Excellent. Nice. So then you have the two ply when you have the two together. Yes. And they'll be on there. And once they're on there, you can wind it all up into a big skein. The skein. Skein, skein, hank. What? There's you? all that terminology. Yes. And then. Exactly. Once it's like that, you and can then, knit from it or weave from it, or do you yeah, have to do a next process? If, if I be, uh, if I've spun out of the raw fleece, like in the grease, like like this fleece that like, came straight off the sheep. Yes. Um, and I have it on the skein. I actually take it off and I wash it. I, I, I so you wash the yarn yeah. when it's still raw, and then and you spin or weave or whatever. And then you knit. Or knit. What did I say? Spin. It's already spun. It's spin. My, <laughs> sorry, my brain. <laughs> it's disintegrating. It's towards the end of the day. You guys have been fantastic. Sorry, and you are. I'm Mona from County Clare. Erica. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. So, Sandra, what? You don't have to look at me. You can look at what you're doing. Okay. Good. Okay. What are you doing? <laughs> You're doing something very... I'm just doing a very simple uh, weaving with the um, Cladore uh, fleece and yarn that we have we processed today. Um, this was some of that we dyed with onion skins, and this is some that was spun So you dyed this ladies. with onion skins mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. so this is all... That's all done today. ...processed yeah. from the, the fleeces that we got fresh right. shorn off the sheep. Right. Ah, very good. Yeah. And then I love... This sweater of yours. Okay. Tell me about this sweater. That's a special sweater. It looks call, like a very special sweater. <laughs> I call it a climate change sweater because the Science Foundation researched the temperature changes in County Galway from 1984 to 2021. Yeah. And made a color chart of those temperature changes. So these colors are 1984 and you know the cooler colors and then as you go up they get warmer and warmer so the temperature in 2021 was quite a bit warmer yeah. than it was down in 1984 and this is this is knit uh, from Galway yeah and the colors are all dyed from plants <gasps> Oh, wow. Okay, so the blues in the cooler time, mm -hmm. what are those? This is indigo. Okay. This is dyed with indigo. Um, you come on up. This is lupins. Okay. This is matter root with oak, combined with oak. Okay. This is the weld flower. The yellow. yellow. Okay. Um, here you have just matter without the oak. Okay. This is the orange matter. And then this is Brazil wood. This what? Is, wow. This is a, a natural dye that comes from, uh, I think it's South America. You don't get it here, so I, I buy it. Okay. And then this is the weld flower, which was yellow here, but I modified it with uh, copper, so it made it green. Oh, wow. So it's all natural uh -huh. dyes. And you call it, what do you call that sweater again? Climate change. Your climate change sweater. I love it. I love it.